Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today is October 23rd. Michael is out in Houston visiting some clients. I'll tell you what, we are busy around here. Let's start with our stories. Kamala Harris, far left climate engagement director, accuses oil and gas workers of committing eco terrorism weaponizing white supremacy and toxic psychiatry. Holy smokes, Batman, you cannot buy this kind of entertainment. Overnight success. The next story, Biden's climate surge gives billions to nonprofit newbies. There's a lot to this story. Then I've got two stories with China. Top U.S. LNG exports. China's gas demand is booming. Follow along with this story. China is overtaking Europe as one of the top market for Russia pipeline gas. I'll tell you what, this is just crazy. Before I get started with this Kamala Harris story here, just want to let you know I've got some several podcasts coming out. Uh, we've The staff has done a great job getting them. We've got executives that we have been uh, interviewing, and I have one of the executives is George McMillan. He's the CEO over there at McMillan Geostrategic Resources, and he and I have been talking about the geopolitical nature and what is going on with China and Taiwan. So this is going to play into our stories here. So let's start with the first story here. Kamala Harris, far left climate engagement director, accuses oil and gas workers of committing eco-terrorism and weaponizing white supremacy and toxic psychiatry. Kamala Thorndike called fossil fuel industry a death cult that weaponized white supremacy. You can't buy this kind of hoo-ha, even if you went to the farm and shoveled it yourself. The Harris Waltz campaign climate engagement director has a long history of demonizing fossil fuels, going as far as accusing oil and gas workers of committing the eco-terrorism and advancing individualism, white supremacy, and toxic patriarchy. Uh, Washington Free Beacon uh, Review found. This is actually disgusting. And when you sit back and think, here's a quote out of the story. To have that level of money flowing so so few people, CEOs and shareholders, there's something evil about that. There's something that is a system that is so unequal and uncallous to human suffering, she said in her August 22 interview with the Climate Journey podcast. I would challenge anyone who's in the fossil fuel sector to consider putting their talents elsewhere else, because in my mind, there's no greater source of harm than continuing to cook the planet, which we've known for decades. My response to you is, if you would love to come on this podcast, let's talk facts. My challenge, Camelia, is if you would come on this podcast, let's talk about what facts are. The facts are, over the last several years, I've been documenting that, that we will, the more we go to renewable wind and solar, which renewable is a funny term, we will use more fossil fuels because they are not sustainable, both in physics and fiscally responsible. You are more than welcome on this podcast at any time. I would love to talk to you about not necessarily white supremacy, because I believe your views are totally out to lunch, but I would love to know why you think a fiscally irresponsible plan of putting in wind and solar with our current grid situation and the current physics, why is it that whenever there are wind and solar countries like Germany, the UK, let's look at New York, New Jersey, California, all of them are failing financially because of the physics around the renewable wind and solar programs. It does not have anything to do with what you're talking about on this. 
totally out to lunch. Interesting article. Uh, let's go to the next one here. Overnight success. Biden's climate splurge gives billions to nonprofit newbies. Uh, there's not much public information available about the Justice Climate Fund, the White House $27 billion greenhouse gas reduction fund, which aims to provide financial assistance to reduce carbon emissions and reduce pollutions. This is a money grab. The Justice Climate Fund is not the only nonprofit newcomer to suddenly make it rich by the GGRF within a month of gaining nonprofit status from the IRS. Holy smokes. I'll tell you what, this is a grab for money. Let's talk about physics. Let's talk about the grid. Let's talk about getting the lowest kilowatt per hour to everyone on the planet with the least amount of pollution. And that means we've got to use natural gas. Natural gas is great, but let's capture the carbon. Let's talk about having capturing the methane. Let's work on that. This is not a one or the highway. I want to say let's use all forms of energy, but let's not fund $27 billion for something that is stupid as this. I'm sorry. This is absolutely gets me worked up. Dan uh, Backus, a critic of the Biden-Harris campaign climate agenda, calls the spending splurge a slush fund. Darren, if you are out there, I'd love to have you on the podcast. Darren Backus is the director of Conservative Com uh, Competitive Enterprise Institute Center for Energy and Environment, a sharp critic of the Biden administration climate change spending split. It's worse than a slush fund, a slush fund to create nonprofit slush funds. Well said, Darren, and you are more than welcome. I would love to hear more about this story from you. Let's roll to the next one here. Top U.S. LNG exports. China's gas demand is booming. Chenier Energy, Chinese demand. This is from Chenier Energy. Chinese demand for natural gas is set to jump by more than 50% by 2040. Holy smokes, Batman. Chenier also expects the first world market within 100 million tons of LNG demand very soon. Shell, the world's top LNG trader, expects the global LNG demand to surge by 50% by 2040. And I think this is a fabulous thing. I think that if we can get off of coal, the, it would be absolutely better for the environment to use natural gas. Like Vietnam has put in an LNG to natural gas power plant so they can take it right off the ship, put it in LNG storage, and then right to the power plant. That is actually a very good use for that. Shell, the world's largest trader, expects global LNG demand to surge by 50% driven by the high demand from Asia. I think it is phenomenal that they're thinking of forward thinking on this. But let's now take that, this story and look at the next story. China is overtaking Europe as the top market for Russia's pipeline gas. Gazprom exports natural gas to China the first nine months of this year are up almost 40% from last year. That is huge. China is on track to become the largest market for Russia's natural gas pipeline this year, overtaking Europe after the Kremlin's war with Ukraine. Russia's gas prime, Gazprom exported 23 billion cubic meters of natural gas to China in the first nine months of this year. That is a lot. Now, this comes into my conversations with George McMillan, and uh, it is unbelievable with, with what's going on. We have the war games going on in China right now, which they're circling Taiwan. Is this about whether they're going to invade Taiwan or not? My podcast with George, we cover that because we also cover BRICS is going on right now with Russia meeting with President Z. He's meeting with a lot of the African leaders. He's meeting with the leaders from the Middle East. And BRICS is actually going to be a 
an a scenario where they're moving off of the petrodollar and also buying gas outside of the US dollar and they're buying them in rubles or won and and so this is a gigantic story George has the opinion that this that they are not going to invade Taiwan, but this is actually tied to BRICS and taking a look at the potential of the pipelines, Japan, South Korea, Korea, and the pipelines all going on to natural gas pipelines from Russia. This is what the old warmongers from the current administration do not want they don't they want everybody not to be reliant on that that's why the nord stream pipeline got blown up as alleged by putin and even forewarned by president biden this is a huge story especially when you understand the back workings that is not mentioned in this story That podcast with George, there's three of them coming up, and those will be coming out as well, too. So please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. And if you are a uh, coming up into the end of the year and you are looking for in, uh, investments with tax advantages and you are needing a tax advantage, please reach out to us. Go to energynewsbeat.co forward slash um investments and it's on the top menu bar take a look at it and it is energynewsbeat.co forward slash investment hyper dash survey and just see if this is uh oil and gas is an investment for you we are currently uh very pleased with our investment in oil and gas and would love to share that information with you have a great day thanks talk to you all soon